you're looking at what may be the face of Jesus Christ. In a moment, I'm going to show you evidence that proves this is the face beyond a reasonable doubt. In a series of videos, we're going to go step by step how this image was formed and how everything was found on the cloth. While Jesus is still on the cross, a small linen, the sudarium, covers his face for dignity. Bright arterial blood mixes with clear pericardial fluid that flows from the mouth and nose, soaking into the cloth along with Jerusalem limestone dust from around the face. Pollen from Zizifus, Spina, Christi, a local Christ's thorn shrub, clings to the damp fibers. Almost everything that lands on this little face cloth, blood, fluid, dust, thorn pollen, will later show up on the larger shroud, giving investigators a forensic link with matching chemical and botanical signatures. The sudarium stays on as the nails are freed and the body is lowered. It will remain under the larger burial sheet until, inside the tomb, it is folded and set aside by itself, exactly as John's Gospel records. Next, the full-length shroud takes over. Watch this. This is the shroud face and I'm going to animate it now and at the end. On the ground, a larger linen, the sindon, the shroud, folded head to toe around the body. The sudarium stayed underneath, still veiling the face. Fresh arterial blood, darker venous flow, Jerusalem limestone dust from knees, feet and nose plus over a hundred scourge strikes, all pressed into the herringbone weave. Every trace was later confirmed by scientists on the Shroud of Turin. Crown wounds joined in, scalp rivulets ran forward and back in two speeds, fast, hair-thin bursts and slower, thicker seeps, a pattern scientists later mapped on the cloth. Blood from the nail wounds had flowed from the wrists, never the palms. Both heels had shared a single spike. Both linens carry pollen from two Passover blooming thorn shrubs, Zizifus spina Christi, Christ thorn, and Gundalia torna forti. Far more grains appear on the shroud than the sudarium, hinting soldiers used branches of both when weaving the crown. Another clue it was a full cap, not just a ring. While the body lay supine on the ground, blood and clear pericardial fluid burst from the spear pierced side. Gravity swept the mix across the ribs and around to the upper back. Only under ultraviolet light does that crystal clear fluid glow. Milky halos outlining the entire side stain. Liquefied myrrh and aloe were poured along both linens. Decades later, GCMS lab tests fingerprinted the same resin blend on shroud and sudarium. Blood chemistries, dust minerals, thorn pollens, fragrant resins, a forensic notebook written on linen but the cloth still shows no portrait of the man yet. Next in the playlist, part three, the moment the image appears. This is history's first ever selfie. It's a selfie of Jesus of Nazareth. And what I've done is animated it. This is part four in the series, The Shroud Scene by Scene, in the playlist. In this video, we explain how we believe this image was actually formed. Friday at sunset, the body is sealed in the tomb. Nothing else touches the linen. Pollen, myrrh, aloes and dried blood settle and lock where they land. In the pre-dawn hours of Sunday, an unearthly flash erupts, and in the twinkling of an eye, the body disappears. Less than 72 hours after burial, the corpse is gone. Yet the sheet shows zero decomposition. No decay acids, no insect trails, nothing. Another case of the empty tomb. Scientists call it a non-biological removal. And the image that Flash left is stranger still. Only the top fibrils were toasted, about one four hundredth the thickness of a human hair. Scratch a single fiber with a razor blade and the picture disappears. No paint, no liquid, 
no natural burning. Just cellulose bonds flipped like a radiation burn. Brightness matches cloth to body distance, encoding the first three-dimensional body scan in history. It's as though God signed his work, leaving a mark no artist or laboratory could ever duplicate. A sign of the resurrection, This is revolutionary. The Shroud Man animated. It's Jesus of Nazareth from the Shroud of Turin and you're gonna see some animation of him walking down a street in the 21st century as well. But we're gonna find out how this image came to be in a moment. We looked at the image that left scientists scratching their heads. It's so superficial that nothing can explain it. Not ultraviolet light, not paint or liquid, not natural burning. Yet the very tips of the linen fibrils have had their molecular bonds subtly altered to turn the image fibrils all the same darker shade. Yet why is there an image if it's all the same shade of color? Under magnification, the picture becomes a galaxy of microscopic complex dots each dot is as small as a fibril, and where the cloth touch skin, the dot count is dense. Plot those counts, and you get the first multi-shades of a 3D body map in history. The more this cloth is studied, the more we edge further towards authenticity with each new find. We now see real AB blood, rimmed by serum halos, traces of myrrh and aloes from first century burial spices, Jerusalem limestone dust on nose and knees, springtime Judean pollen, and still no trace of decay acids. And all this puts it in the first century Judea, we have the flax for the cloth confirmed as coming from around the same region. X-ray wax method that dated other first century cloths for their degradation, shows the shroud identical to those in degradation, proving it's 2000 years old. The sample taken from the shroud must be 2000 years old. <laughs> 